President Trump's decision to recognize Jerusalem as Israel's capital continues this morning as violent protests broke out in front of the U.S. Embassy in Lebanon. The issue is being used as a rallying call across the Muslim world, and more demonstrations are expected in the coming days. ABC's James Longman is on the ground in the thick of it with the very latest. Overnight, across the region, from Beirut to Jakarta, a rallying cry for angry protesters. And earlier, tear gas and rubber bullets raining down near the site where Jesus was born. This, not long after President Trump announced the U.S. would recognize Jerusalem as the capital of Israel and vowed to move the U.S. embassy there. At least four Palestinians have been killed and hundreds injured since the news broke. In Gaza, where fury at the president burned, Israeli airstrikes hit weapon sites after three rockets were fired into its territory. He cannot give something that does not belong to him. There's no peace in the world if there is no peace in Jerusalem. And on Friday at the United Nations, the U.S. defending its decision. The United States will not be lectured to by countries that lack any credibility when it comes to treating both Israelis and Palestinians fairly. And James Longman joins us now. And James, I know you're there in the West Bank and behind you some protesters. What do you think we'll see in the coming days? Well, Martha, more of the same. I don't know if you can see, but there have just been a huge volley of uh, tear gas shot over from Israeli security forces as these groups of young men approach. And it's been like this here in Bethlehem, in Ramallah, across the West Bank, and in Gaza, and further afield across the uh, Arab and Muslim world, because this really is a rallying cry. We haven't seen the mass protest that I think some people expected. That might be because Palestinians feel a bit despondent about the situation with their leadership. But nevertheless, tensions here running very high and uh, violence can erupt at any moment. And, and what's the reaction of the Israelis you've talked to? Well, as you might imagine, the Israeli government is very supportive of this move. And speaking to people in West Jerusalem, for example, their reaction is very simple. They believe that Israel is, uh, Jerusalem is their capital, their government buildings are here, the Knesset is here. So they think this is a realistic uh, announcement to make. I don't think it's lost on Israelis, though, that Donald Trump made this speech uh, to placate his base in the US because it was a campaign promise. But nevertheless, um, I think, uh, broadly speaking, Israelis are happy. Although I think people on the left of the Israeli spectrum here uh, are slightly concerned that it might have a negative impact on negotiations. And, and a little bit more on that. What, what do you think we'll see in terms of any kind of peace, peace initiative? Well, the uh, Palestinian Authority President Mahmoud Abbas called the, um, the speech reprehensible. He has uh, he said that this totally uh, it totally ruins the U.S. position as a neutral uh, broker, if you like, because that goes to the very heart of this entire peace process. The United States has been a, a neutral broker to be able to get two sides around the table, and the, and the Palestinian Foreign Minister has said very clearly that he believes that uh, that Donald Trump has picked a side. So. There is going to need to be a peace process, a peace initiative, but uh, quite what the role the United States has in that, well, I think that's now in the balance, Martha. Thanks very much for joining us, James, and stay safe.